Welcome to the Zion's Wall broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once, welcome twice. This is Ivan Sazet. That's a very short message share with you. A very short message share with you. May we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory it shed by our way. While we'll do His good will, He will abide with us, with us still. And with all who will trust and Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a serious times. I just want to say to everyone, each day, take a minute out of your time to take time out for Jesus. Take a minute out of your busy time to take time out for Jesus. Take a minute out of your busy time to give God praise. Take a minute out of your busy time to give God glory and tell redemption story. For ladies and gentlemen, as we go through these days, we need to rem be reminded that we need a shelter. There's a storm that we're going to have to face. There are some trials and there are some tribulation that is heading our way. But I just want to remind us for us to be safe. We have to make sure the Lord's of a rock in him we hide. Make sure he's the shelter. You know, a time of storm, secure whatever may be tied. Make sure the Lord is our shelter in the time of storm. You know, the raging flood may run us beat, but if we have Jesus as our shelter, as our shield, then, ladies and gentlemen, we can go to bed and sleep. Because Jesus himself was on a boat or in a ship, and one time there was a storm, and in the middle of the storm, Jesus was way down in the ship sleeping. And his disciples got upset when the storm was beating and about to, seemed like it was about to break up the ship, and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was in the ship sleeping. And he got up on deck. He got up on deck and he spoke to the wind and the wave. He spoke to the wind and the wave and the thunder and let them shut up. And, and, and when Jesus spoke to the wind and the wind, the wind and the wave, notice Jesus was sleeping and his disciple was worried and thought they was going to die and said, Carest do not we perish? And when Jesus got up on deck and he spoke to the wind and the wave, they obey his will. And the disciples on the, on, the, on the boat said, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the wave would obey him? As we go through these days, we need to have Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as the shelter, the shelter in our time of storm. This little message entitled, Jesus. Jesus, the best shelter in a storm. Jesus, the best shelter in a storm. This world is in a serious place right now in terms of ups and down and rough times and tough times. The storms and the clouds are gathering as a sign that there's a storm coming. The clouds are gathering and all, everything is pointing to the fact that the storm is coming. And I, Evangelist F. Bex, I want to welcome you to the Zion's World Broadcast Ministry. As I try to share the word of God in these last days. And this little message entitled, Jesus the best shelter in a storm. Jesus the best shelter in a storm. The old song said, The Lord's of a rock in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade and the burning sand. Faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, Jesus is a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes of right, for Jesus is a shelter 
in the time of time. Mighty Rock, call on him. Mighty Rock, oh Jesus. The raging flood may round us beat, oh Lord. But Jesus is the best shelter at a time of storm. We find in God a safe retreat. Hallelujah. For Jesus is a shelter at a time of storm. O oh, rock divine, O oh, refuge dear, Jesus, you're the best shelter in the time of storm. Now, if you have never been through a storm, a storm come to shake up stuff. A storm come to break up stuff. A, song, a storm come to tear up stuff. A storm come to mess up things. A storm come to throw things around. And a, a storm come to bring disappointment. A, a storm come with the intention to cause a setback. When Jesus and his disciples was on that boat, they were going somewhere. And the storm came to stop them. The storm came to interrupt them because the devil knew that they were going somewhere to cause uh, a, a uh, to cause trouble in his court. In another, another word, Satan know that anywhere Jesus comes around, when he comes around, things got to change. And if the devil is running things, when Jesus comes around, things must be changed. So the storm came to stop the disciple and Jesus from going forward. Storms come to slow you down. Storm come to throw you up. Storm come to break up the plans that you have. Satan sent a storm that was so powerful that the great fishermen, Jesus' disciples, was fearful that the ship would break up and they got upset saying, Caris, though not that we perish, but Jesus was sleeping and they were trying to keep the boat alive They get upset, you know. And Jesus said, oh, you have little faith. There's a storm coming and you need shelter, brothers and sisters. But Jesus is the best shelter you can find. Many years ago, I was studying and um, in, in World War II, World War I, they used to build something they call bomb shelter. So when the planes are dropping bombs, they build some special places that could uh, withstand these bombs. And so the thing is, though, you got to get in the bomb shelter before the bombs start falling. Hey, Amen. Somebody, somebody need to hear that again. You need to get into the bomb shelter before the bombs start falling. What, what are you saying, Baxter? This storm that is coming up on the land and the nation and the people and the herd. We need to honor the shelter of the Lord. We need to make sure we are sheltered under the wings of the Lord. But for this to happen, we have to have a relationship with the Lord. When the bombs start falling, you can't just run knocking down the door. Because the door will not be open. When the rain start falling nowadays, they were knocking down the door. Now, 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 let us in. But it was too late. You have to already have access to go through the gate. So hi, Evangelist F. Baxter, encourage you and tell you that there's a storm coming. But you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You can't wait till the place get dark. You have to have this relationship now before it's too late. I want to give you a Bible text, my brothers and sisters. You know, uh, a lot of times we I put up these videos and my purpose is that for somebody to get to know the Lord better. Not to know Baxter, but to know the Lord. So look in the book of St. Mark chapter 4, St. Mark chapter 4, verse 35, St. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, Jesus calmed the storm. Look how Jesus calms the storm. Uh, this fierce storm came up, high waves were breaking into the boat, 
And it began to behave as if it would have sink. And Jesus calmed the storm. Jesus is the best shelter in a storm. Uh, Jesus may seem to many of us in our personal life that he sleeps or he's sleeping and the job. Somebody might think that Jesus is sleeping at the job. Somebody might think that I'm praying and Jesus is sleeping at the job. But the disciples was upset that in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the fierce and deadly storm, Jesus was fast asleep. Somebody might think that he is sleeping now. But I wanted to keep in mind that even though you may think that he's sleeping, Christ the Savior is in the boat. Even though he sleeps, our faith should lead us to trust that Christ is with us on the boat. And to know once he's on the boat, it may rock back and forth, but it will never sink in the storm. He may seem to be sleeping on the job, so to speak, but he's still with us. Oh, brothers and sisters, evangelists at Backside trying to tell somebody that when you go through these challenging days, when you go through ups and down, Jesus Christ, if he's in your boat, it will never sink. If he's in your church, it will never, your church will never fail. If he's in your life, your life will always have this hope of everlasting life. Jesus is the best shelter to have. You see, insurance is good to have, but they will fail you. Businesses will fail us when disaster come, but Jesus will never fail you. Is the best shelter. Is the best storm comma. Oh, Jesus Christ can sleep in the midst of a storm. Is our God. You are his children. We are his children. And the master demonstrate that while I'm sleeping, I still can protect you. Because even though I was sleeping, you did not drown. <laughs> Somebody is praying and say, Jesus is sleeping on the job, but can I speak to you now? God, give me this message to tell you. You may think I'm sleeping, but I see the tears that you shed. I know your fears. I know what you've been through. I know what you're going through. And I'm not going to give you more than what you can bear. But I'm watching you, sir. I see how they treat you on the job. I see how they deal with you and your family. I see all the good that you have done. And I see you didn't get no reward down here. But remember, remember, sister, remember, brother, I, Jesus, in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 12, promise you, behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as our work shall be oh my brothers and sisters look to god for your reward in the time of storm in the time when things get dark in the times when it seems like there is nobody there remember jesus is on is on the boat jesus if he's on your boat in the darkness of the night call him up for notice when they call him he came up on deck and he calmed the raging sea. Tell the thunder, shut up. The wave, go back to rest. Our God is able to walk on our storms and calm our storms. But you have to have him as your shelter. You can't wait till the storm come before you call him. Notice Jesus was already on the boat before the storm come. Can I, can I talk to somebody? Get Jesus in your life. So when the storm come, the storm karma can rise up. When the storm come, the storm karma can speak to the wind and the wave and let them shut up. Oh Lord, hallelujah. 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in this message, I just want to remind somebody, Jesus, the best shelter in a storm. I just want to remind you that even though he sleeps, Christ, when he's in your boat, we must remember that as long as he's in the boat, we need to find strength. And the reason that we can find strength uh, is to remember, ladies and gentlemen, that he's still in the boat. Yes, you might say sleeping, Christ is sleeping in the boat. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, he's still on the job. You may be praying about something you did not hear, nothing from heaven, you may not hear nothing, but I want to remind you that Jesus Christ is still on the job. Christ is in the boat, meaning he's with us, and in his good times, he will help us. In bad times, he will help us. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, I want to let you know that Christ, when he's on the job, ladies and gentlemen, he's there to help you to have faith ladies and gentlemen we have to have faith that even though you might not hear him when you call him remember he's still on the job our faith and our prayers can wake jesus up can i say that again our faith and our prayers can wake jesus up because jesus call jesus disciples call him when they say carries though not we carries though here is though not that we perish. Our faith and our prayers and our praise can wake Jesus up. When the disciples found themselves in the midst of the terrible storm, when they struggle with uh, doubt, when they struggle that they might die, when they wonder if they would make it, Jesus was, uh, and they, they even wonder if Jesus cared about them. They still managed to do some remarkable things but the greatest thing that they did in the midst of the storm was to wake Jesus up. Think about it. The waves were beating into the boat. In fact, the boat was already being swamped with water. According to the story, they must have seen, they must have been doing everything imaginable, everything in their power to keep the boat from capsizing or sinking. And yet in the midst of all that, someone taught of waking Jesus up. Hallelujah. Someone taught of waking Jesus up. And whosoever that person was, they rushed down and they say, Master, here is still not that we perish. Thank God that somebody run to Jesus. Thank God that somebody run to Jesus. Thank God that somebody called Jesus up. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to call Jesus up. Call Jesus up. <laughs> but don't wait till the storm come. Call Jesus up, but don't wait till you're in the midst of the storm. Don't wait till it get dark. Don't wait till rain start to fall, flooding you. Don't wait till we're stuck in the mud. Don't wait till it get dark. But each day, call him up. Each morning, call him up. Each afternoon, give him praise. For when the praises goes up, his blessings come down. Jesus, the best shelter in a storm. You know, there's a team sport, my brothers and sisters. In this team sport, they call it soccer, football. You don't have to want, make, be the one that make the goal. But when you're on the team, when you're on the team, uh, if you're a part of the team and someone on the team make the goal, you all win. All the disciples in the boat uh, one of them went and called Jesus and everybody win. My point to somebody is this. And your Christian journey and the Christian road, we have to remember to take some time in a Christian life, in the church, in the family. Sometimes it just take one to call. It just take one to call because once you're on the team, everybody will win. Everybody on the boat did not have the necessary call. So in a team, as a church, as a people, we need somebody to call. For everybody win when Jesus come in the boat and start to speak. In your family, you need somebody need to pray. But I just want to say this is good when everybody pray. But sometimes we are waiting on someone else to pray and nobody else pray for you expect that other person to pray. But there is always one 
and you should be that one that pray and you should be that one that call in the midst of the storm or before the storm if you be the one that always pray then somebody will pray don't wait on the next person to pray as a church there is somebody need to pray ladies and gentlemen what i like about jesus when he came up on deck he spoke to the problem before he talked to his disciples he spoke to the problem he spoke to the wind and he spoke to the wave and the disciples marveled and said what manner of man is this that even the wind and the wave would obey him one day all of the storms of life my brothers and sisters will be ended the sea will be peaceful and calm forevermore one day until then we can count on storms to come from left right and center life will continue to be difficult my brothers and sisters but with jesus on the boat don't you worry with jesus on your life don't you worry true as we go through life keep holding on to this one amazing truth that jesus care for us so much he's willing to get in the boat with us can i say that again as we go through the trials of life keep this one thing in mind as you go through the ups and downs as you face the storms of life where i come from family where i come from friends where i come from sickness where i come from work where i come from church as you face the storms of life where i come in a financial problem or in a relationship problem whatever the storm may be remember this one truth that i leave with you jesus cares so much he's willing to get in the boat with us he's willing to die for us he's willing to perish so that we can have life his answers to his disciples when they say curious though not they said don't you care they said jesus don't you care do you care jesus how many of us is asking this question <laughs> because you pray for a loved one we pray for a loved one and they still die and somebody's saying jesus do you care do you care do you do, do, does it care do you really care and i want to answer that question yes jesus care jesus care and that is all matters it is what give us peace in the midst of any storm that jesus care even though he sleeps christ is in the boat so i encourage you as you go through today i encourage you as you go through tonight as i encourage you as you go through the fire i encourage you as you go to your sickness i encourage you as you go to your trials and you face the challenges that are not in your favor. I encourage you as you look at that circumstances, that dream that you dream that is not coming true. I, Evangelist F. Baxter, encourage you, dear God, at this moment, bless this man. Oh Lord, bless this woman and bless these boys and girls, including myself. I pray, O oh God, that we will see you in the midst of the lightning. We'll see you in the midst of the thunder. We'll see you in the midst of the darkness. We'll see you in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. We'll see you when things are peaceful. We'll not just wait till it's dreadful. But I pray that we'll see you each day when we pray, when we read our Bible. We'll see you each time we pray. We'll see you when we read our Bible and watch and pray. Oh God, help us to remember you're the best shelter in a storm. Many people may say, Baxter, Christ sleep in the boat. And so many people are asking this question, Master, curious though not that we perish in Luke, in Mark chapter 
4 and verse 38. Many people are saying, Baxter, you're talking about Jesus, but I'm going through. But I just want to let you know he care. Our Lord, remarkable display of teaching when he got up on deck. God, Jesus got up and he spoke to the same thing that was causing troubles to his disciples. He had power, oh Lord. The same thing that was scaring his disciple, letting them think that he, they would not make it. Our Lord had the power to speak to it. Right now, the same God that was is the same God that is today. You can come to him and ask him to speak to your storm. What is your storm? Is your storm a sickness? Is your storm financial problem? Is your storm your health problem? Is your storm a sin problem? Is your storm a job problem? Is your storm a relationship problem? Whatever is your storm, the best person to bring it to. Jesus, the best shelter in a time of storm. Remember I told you storm come to destroy stuff. Storm come to mess things up. Storm come to stop us from getting somewhere. But Jesus rebuked that storm. There's a storm we're facing that is trying to stop us from going forward ever. But Jesus, the master of the power, to speak to that storm. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems that when the storm began, the disciples did not at first awake the master. When the storm began, the disciples, based on their experience, seemed like they thought they could have handled it. They had some consideration for Jesus tiredness because he was preaching a lot so they have some concern that he needs some rest or some rest for he was re weary so they tried to do what they could it seems for jesus had spent all day in very severe uh situation toiling and preaching and teaching to mankind but um the uh, they know he was exhausted and need some rest and revival. So they try their best to row and to make it through the storm. But the storm keep coming. The storm keep beating while Jesus was sleeping. Amidst the howling and the winds and the raging wave, they, they, they knew little how deeply calm is the savior sleep was so amid the tempest somebody say it seemed like jesus don't care because the storm is beating pop 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 the ship is seem like it's about to sink and jesus is still sleeping and you know somebody saying right now i've been praying for something i've been praying about something and i can't hear nothing <laughs> So when this when 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 things get rough and things get so somebody cry out and say, Master, we perish. <laughs> we perish. And then they say, Care is though not that we perish. Many of them cry out, it said, are one of are someone say one of them. But we know they cry out, Master, care is though not that we perish. And um, they are saying, you know, we're going through a hard time. You know, do you really care? Do you love us? <laughs> do you really love us? They call him master and yet they were in sort of a semi-rebellion against him. They, 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 they was upset that they did not come based on what was going on. But they were ready to, to you know, they, they, they kind of hold back. But, you know, they, they have to express themselves. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus got up there 
I love oh Jesus take care of things. I love it. Jesus spoke to the wind and the wave. Jesus demonstrated that he cared because he calmed the storm. He demonstrated that he loved his disciples in Luke 4, 35 to 41. He demonstrated that he cared for them and he loved them. That's why he calmed the storm that was seeking to take their life. Somebody say, care is though not we perish. Yes, he cared because he calmed the storm. He calmed the raging sea. So we solved the problem. Jesus cared because he calmed the storm. The disciple wonder what manner of man is this. Now, as I close this message, I got to tell you this. Storm come to block. Storm come to stop. Storm come to stop you from getting to your destination. So when Jesus calmed the storm, they arrived on the other side. They immediately met by a man possessed by many demons. Now, the devil did not want them to cross over. But the devil know that he have somebody on the other side doing a lot of things for him and he didn't want Jesus and his disciples to go change things. You know, the devil is trying to stop somebody. The devil is trying to block somebody because he know that you, my brothers and sisters, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can cause a lot of damage to his kingdom. So the storm was trying to stop the ship from getting over. But God, Jesus got up and calmed the raging sea. And when they crossed over them, it was met by a man possessed by many demons. He was so strong that even chains could not hold him. And everyone was afraid to pass by that way that this crazy man would. Uh, this man was aggressive and violent. Not only that, he lived among the tombs and was therefore constantly in touch with death. The ultimate defilement in Jewish law, both inside and outside, this man was as corrupt as could be. He was possessed. Jesus comes to this man, the man whom no else, no one else, dare to approach. Jesus, the best shelter in the time of storm, approach this man. Now he's no longer casual. Now we see Jesus relentlessly pursuing. And decide I'm going to show the world that I have power. The demons that afflict this poor soul. This man in St. Mark chapter 5 verse 8. He's on the offensive. This man that was possessed was on the offensive and aggressive. But earlier, but when Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. The storm tried to stop him and block him, but dear, because the devil know that God have a work to be done. The Lord God Almighty is working in our life and the devil know that there is a lot you can do in the name of Jesus. So he's causing a lot of storm to block, to slow you down. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. Right? Jesus is not just making an idle suggestion. He moves with purpose. Knowing that the other side, knowing that on the other side of the lake is a battleground, on the other side of the lake is a situation that need to fix. He will go and confront the servant of his enemy, and he will be victorious. So while they are crossing the, the, the sea, no matter what you're facing, no matter the wind are the size of the wind of the waves Jesus is very concerned don't care that he's not don't think he's not concerned he's very concerned about you he's not confronting the enemy in the storm rather the enemy lies on the other side of the storm there is nothing to fear on the water Jesus was trying to tell his disciples the storm is not his main point. 
Yes, the storm threatened to sink the ship, but with Jesus and the ship, the ship can sink. Storms threatened to sink our faith. These are not everyday storms I'm talking about. Inconvenience like a flood tire or hustling to get at work. These are the, these things I'm talking about are more difficult than the little things like late and a flood tire. These things I'm talking about are prolonged illnesses, situation that could lead to death, like the storm. That crazy man that was possessed and need to be set free. It seems sometimes some people think that Jesus is asleep and, and, and they're wondering if he care. And yes, he care. He really care. He really care. Jesus faced this man that was possessed with many demons after the cross of the wave and the wind and the sea after they calm it down. And he speak to this man that was demon oppressed and possessed and told the demons to leave. He came, Jesus Christ, after he calmed the storm, he came to save a soul. Jesus did not come to give comfort, come to give a comfortable life uh, to everybody. That's not what he came to do, but he came to give life. He came to defeat death. That's what he came to do. Not to give you a comfortable, perfect life. He came to defeat death and, and to, 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 to cast out demons and evil. So Jesus' part was not as easy as our part. So as you go through life, remember the thing that I want to say as I close this message. Storm come to block, storm come to stop, for Jesus need to set somebody free. Jesus need to set that demon possessed man on the other side free. And the storm was trying to destroy the son of God. But if God is in a boat can sink if god is in a church can be sink if god is in your life your future will be bright jesus is the best shelter in the time of storm i evangelist and baxter encourage you as you go through this day as you go through this night whatever storm you're facing whatever circumstances you're facing Remember, if Jesus is in your life, he can change the circumstances. The man on the other side was demon, oppressed, and possessed. But Jesus crossed over the storm, you see, after he calmed it, went to the back of ground, and the demons have to go. And the soul was set free. Would you be free from a burden of sin? Jesus can set you free. In spite of the storms that you've been through in the past. In spite of the storm we are facing today. Just like Jesus cross over the sea from one side to the next. To deliver a man. So he has the power to deliver you. Storms are frightening, I know. I have experienced wild Gilbert. But in spite of the storms, sometimes there are greater things to face. Sometimes there are greater things to survive. Does God care? He care care for you came to die for you came to set you free somebody keeps saying back say he's sleeping in the boat he's sleeping on the job well he sent a message for you to tell you when you think I'm sleeping I'm working for you when you think I don't care I care but while you were yet sinners I die for you. I die for 
you and I'm willing to save you. The question is, are you willing for me, Jesus, to save you? Are you willing for Jesus to guide you? Are you willing for Jesus to turn you around? Are you willing to call out to Jesus? Are you willing to admit that you need help? After you row and you row and you try, you try all type of thing. You try lato. You try evil. You try all type of evil. You see it didn't work. Are you willing to try the best person? Jesus, the best shelter in the time of storm? Are you willing to try the wave comma? Are you willing to try the life savior? These are questions you can answer. I can't answer them. Are you willing to say, Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated law to thee. I give you Jesus in St. Mark 4 verse 35 to 41. Look what he did. Oh, he calmed the raging sea. And chapter 5 of St. Mark and verse 8. St. Mark chapter 5 verse 8. After Jesus calmed the raging sea and spoke to his disciples, a man that people was running from, a man that people didn't want to walk past where he lived because he lived in a graveyard around the dead. Jesus spoke to him and he become calm like a baby sitting at the feet of Jesus. No demon in hell can block and stop the power of God. If you're a child of God, God have the power over evil. Oh Lord have mercy. And no demon that oppress and depress people can hold on a true child of God. But once Jesus is come, one Jesus come forward, one Jesus come forth in your life, demons got to go. Bad habit got to go. Aggressiveness got to go. Hating got to go. Violence got to go. But Jesus have the power to change and Possess man life is the best storm karma. Are you willing for him to change your life today? So if you are willing, wherever you are, why don't you say, Lord, this guy Baxter, I don't even know him, but he's not the main thing here. You, Lord, is the main thing. I thank you for this word. And I'm willing for you to come and take over my life. Take over my life. Whatever need to change, Dr. Jesus, please change it. And I'm willing to follow you. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, bless every soul that hear this message. Everyone, every woman, every boy, every girl, every man, including myself. When the road is called of yonder, save us in your kingdom. Thank you for being the best shelter in the time of storm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you did for the disciple. You care for you calm the storm that was about to kill them. And you care because you go to the other side to set a demon possessed man free. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your chain-breaking power. Thank you. You demonstrate that you have power over the ocean and over the sea. For you are the God in Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. The God that created heaven and the earth, the sea and the fountains of water. You spoke to the sea that you established so you demonstrate your creative power. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. You spoke to the ocean. 
but you make the ocean, the sea, and the fountains of water. We're happy that you're the best shelter in the time of storm. Thank you for this message in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning into the Zion's Wall as I close out this message. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for stopping by. Please do not forget. Do not forget. Do not forget to share this message with somebody. Let them know it's a secret what God can do. What he done for others. He have the power to do for them too. Kindly, kindly, kindly share this message with somebody. I know they will be blessed in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, this message entitled, Jesus is the best shelter in the time of storm. Share it with somebody. I know they will be blessed. And if you need more message, check out the Zion's Wall broadcast by typing Evangelist at Backs Up on YouTube. Do not forget to subscribe like and share if you subscribe to the channel you can get all the other messages we have some great messages coming out pray for me that as i go from day to day these are the message will you will receive them and you will get a blessing in jesus name have a nice day or night god bless you and keep you hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord do not forget to join me ladies and gentlemen every sunday morning and the radio station at 905fm.net. That's 905fm.net. Join me every Sunday morning with Dr. Bees. Uh, just join me every Sunday morning at 6 to 7 and 12 noon to 1 p.m. God bless you. Do not forget, ladies and gentlemen, I share some message. You can check me out upon Facebook, Peter Baxter. We are sharing the word of God. Tell somebody about this gospel channel, Zion's Wall Broadcast Ministry, sharing the word of God. Thank you. God bless you.